Hello and welcome to StoryShip. In this updated Premiere Pro tutorial, we are going to create an awesome sunglasses transition. And that will look something like this. In this tutorial, we're going to zoom out, but you could also use the same technique to zoom in. Anyway, let's move over to Premiere and show you how it's done after the shout out to our sponsor Envato Elements. Envato Elements is a great source for all your creative projects. They offer millions of high quality items like stock videos and images, music and sound effects, but also many transition templates and presets. If you want to try them out, then use the link in the video description to claim a discount on your first month. The links can be found in the video description. Inside Premiere, I've already got two clips on the timeline that I've got from Envado Elements. As you can see, I'm working with a 1080p or 1920 by 1080 sequence. Also, both clips are 1080p, but very high quality. And that's important because we're going to zoom in a lot. So if you have the option, then I would recommend using 4K footage. It's not mandatory for these effects, but it's certainly recommended. Okay, so where do we start? The first step in the process is finding the right frame to use for the transition. So I'm going to move the playhead and find a frame where she's looking directly into the camera. I think that this frame will do. Next I'm going to cut the track at that point. I'm going to hit the C key to enable the razor tool and then cut the track in two parts. And after that I'm going to switch back to the selection tool by hitting the V key. In the next step I'm going to click on this camera icon which will export this frame. A new window will pop up where you can change some settings. We're going to use the JPEG format for this one and we'll also import it into the project. And then I'm going to click OK to close the window. And then you can find this snapshot inside your project panel. You can now add the snapshot to the timeline at the point where the first clip should end. And then cut and remove the other part of the clip and do the same for the second one and then glue the two parts together. And then we also need to shorten the length of the snapshot layer. In my experience, somewhere around 15 frames works best for this transition and that is based on 25 FPS footage. But of course you can play around with the length until you have something that works best for your footage. Now everything is ready to do some masking. To do this select the snapshot layer and then move over to the effects control panel. Here we're going to click on this pen tool or the free draw bezier tool to create a mask. Then I'm going to zoom in to 200% so I can work more accurately. I think that we can even set it to 400% in this case. And now I'm going to use the pen tool with the left mouse button to create a mask. Although we're going to use a feather for the edges of the mask, it's still good to do this as precisely as possible. And we're going to mask out both glasses, so we need to create a bridge between the two. Okay, so now we've created the first mask, but it also includes the bridge part that we don't need. And to fix that, we're going to create another mask. So we need to go back to the effects control panel and there we're going to select the free drawing bezier tool again and we're going to draw a mask over the unwanted part. And now that we finished the second mask we need to invert the first one. And that's because we need to cut out the glasses and not the other way around. So inside the effects control panel we're going to enable the checkbox for inverted here. And now only the glasses are cut out of the frame. And we can also play around with the feather to improve the outline of the mask even more. A feather value of 3 will be enough in this case. Next I'm going to zoom back to the regular view and then we're going to add some keyframes for scaling and position to animate the zoom effect. We need to do this in the effects control panel and there we're going to click on this stopwatch icon next to scaling and position to enable keyframes. This creates the first set of keyframes that need to be moved to the end of the transition. And then I'm going to reposition and zoom in all the way until we are entirely inside the glasses. And now with this second set of keyframes we've created this animation. And by the way we need to put the second keyframes at the beginning of the transition. We'll also make the animation a bit more smoother. We can do this by selecting the first set of keyframes, then right click and select Ease Out. Then select the second set of keyframes, right click and select Ease In. As you can see by the graph, now the speed will increase and decrease smoothly. And that will look something like this. In the next steps we're going to add some more effects. Move over to the effects panel and search for the tint effect. You'll find this under video effects color correction. Drag this effect over to the timeline and apply it to the first clip. 
and then move over to the effects control panel and go to the tint effect. And here I'm going to use the color picker to map black to another color. As you can see I've got the playhead on the second clip so this way I can select the color from her sunglasses. And because I'm going to map black I'm going to pick one of the darker spots in her sunglasses. Next I'll do the same for map to white but this time we'll pick a lighter color. And after mapping these colors the first clip should match a lot better with the colors of the sunglasses. But if the difference is still too big you could also apply some color correction like adding some saturation or playing around with contrast. For this demo I won't spend too much time in perfecting this but you get the point. Ok back to the first clip. We don't want to have this purple look for the entire clip so we need to add some keyframes to adjust the amount of the effect. I'm going to add the first keyframe right before the transition starts. Then I'm going to move a couple of frames back and change the value to 0. And that will create the next keyframe. And with these two keyframes we've created this color transition. In the next steps I'm going to add another effect which is named Lens Distortion. You'll find it under Video Effects Distort. I'll apply this effect to the first clip. Then I'm going to move the playhead halfway the first clip and create the first keyframe. Then move a few frames forward somewhere at the beginning of the transition and then change the curvature value. And now we've created this effect with these two keyframes. For the final step we're going to move the playhead forward to the point where the zoom starts to increase. Make sure you've got the first clip selected and then inside the effects control panel enable keyframes for scaling and position. Then I'll increase scaling for the first clip to 35%. I'm adding the scaling to create a bit of an extra range for the zoom effect. And for the next set of keyframes I will decrease scaling and also reposition the frame. And similar to the zoom keyframes we will also apply ease in and ease out at interpolation options for the keyframes. And then I'll move the second set of keyframes to the end of the transition and that will look something like this. As you can see it now slightly zooms out and moves across the sunglass during the transition. And as a final touch we're going to add some directional blur. Inside the effects panel search for the directional blur effect. You'll find this under Video Effects Blur and Sharpen. I'm going to apply this effect to the snapshot layer. And then move the playhead to the center of the transition and go to the effects control panel. And then enable keyframes for blur length and set the value to 5. Create two more keyframes with value 0 and put them at the beginning and the end of the transition. And now we've created this subtle blur when we zoom out. And that's it! Let's have a look at what we've created. And that's it for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it and if you would like to see more Premiere Pro tutorials then check out one of these two. And as always, thanks again for watching and I hope you have a wonderful day.